We previously proved that the identity function f of x equals x is continuous, and we also proved these basic continuity laws, links in the description to those lessons. I mentioned how every polynomial is continuous, and with these results, we can establish that. Today, we'll look at that result a little bit more in depth, and also see that every rational function is continuous. So, how do these results guarantee us that every polynomial is continuous? Well, an arbitrary polynomial looks like this. Just a bunch of terms consisting of a real number multiplied by some non-negative integer power of the variable x. And it's pretty Pretty easy to prove that such a function is continuous. It's made up of these monomial terms getting added together. We know that every monomial, ai times x to the i, is continuous by repeated applications of law 3 here, that the product of continuous functions is continuous. That's because we know the identity function f of x equals x is continuous. So to get any positive integer power of x, we can just apply law 3 over and over again. x times x would give us x squared. Multiply by x again would be x cubed. And law 3 here tells us that all of those powers have to be continuous. And then an application of law 1 would guarantee us that multiplying that power of x by any real number still leaves us with a continuous expression. So laws 3 and 1, along with the fact that the identity function is continuous, combine to guarantee that any monomial from this polynomial is continuous. But then, of course, we can just apply property 2 to guarantee that any sum of these monomials must also be continuous, since the individual monomials themselves are continuous. That's how we know that every polynomial is continuous using these laws. And this also guarantees us that every rational function is continuous. A rational function, q of x, is a function of the form f of x divided by g of x, where f and g are polynomials, and of course, the domain doesn't include where g of x equals zero. We know that a rational function has to be continuous because we just saw that every polynomial is continuous, so f and g would be continuous, but then we also have continuity law 4, which tells us the ratio of continuous functions is also continuous, assuming that the denominator is non-zero. So indeed, every rational function is continuous, at least where it's defined. With these results, now any time we have a limit of a polynomial or a rational function, we can confidently evaluate this limit by just plugging in the limit point, as we did in calculus. The limit of x squared minus 4x plus 3 as x approaches 3, well, this is a polynomial. It's continuous. So since it's defined at 3, its limit must be its value at that point. So 3 squared, which is 9, minus 12, which is negative 3, plus 3, which is 0. Just plug 3 in. That's your limit. What's the limit of x cubed plus 5x squared divided by x minus 2? Well, this is a rational function, so it's continuous. Continuous, since it's defined at x equals 1, we can just plug 1 in. That gives us 1 cubed plus 5 in the numerator, which is 6, divided by 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. So 6 divided by negative 1, or negative 6. Just plug it in, we get our limit, since these guys are continuous. So that's nice. Rational functions are continuous, and so are polynomials. But with that, we have pretty much run these results dry. Next up, we'll consider composite functions, like the square root of x squared plus 1. We can't use our previously proven laws to establish that this is continuous. We're going to have to prove that the composition of continuous functions is continuous to do that. We'll do that next time. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these real analysis lessons helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. Thanks for watching. I'm a secular and aesthetic for